you have now entered the Pretty Tough to the Pretty Tough Room podcast. I'm your host, Adele P. And today's topic is comparison of others. Now, that's something that I've been seeing quite frequently these days. Everybody wants to have what other people have. And I don't think I ever really was that way. I kind of wanted to have like the basic things that people should have. But I don't necessarily remember wanting what someone else has. Uh, Maybe it could have been because I knew better to want what somebody else has because I've seen it done. Um, People wanting what other people have and then they get it and then it's not really what they wanted. Right. So today I wanted to talk about comparing yourself to others and um, not being content with what you have, which is something that we should be intentional about. Um, I know that I myself have asked the question, you know, why don't I have this thing? Um, How is it that I work just as hard for things and there's no recognition, right? Operating in my flesh, just wanting what I want. Um, But I do know that there are people And you know what, honestly, I may have, now that I think about it, I may have wanted something someone had, but not exactly what they had. But I mean, like these days, with the things that is presented on TV, the music that is being created, a lot of people live in the world of which they see and not of what they uh, want for themselves. Um, Comparing yourselves to others is it's kind of a form of mm, I guess what I'm trying to say it's kind of a form of jealousy because right if you want what someone else has exactly then you're jealous of that person and what they have going on for themselves and that's not fair to do to people because you don't know what that person went through to get the things that they have. You you just don't know. You have no idea. They may have been through storm after storm. They may have had to give up some things that you probably never would voluntarily give up, even if you knew that that was the method to get that thing which you want that they have. So for example, People might want another person's relationship. I've seen it done and it's been done to me. On the outside looking in, someone sees that you're in love and they see that, you know, you have someone adores you and cares for you and provides for you. And on the outside looking in, they're like, yeah, I want that. I want exactly that. I want to be able to have that thing. I don't care what. I got to do to get it. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get it. And they begin to plot and scheme to get that thing that you have, that relationship that you have. But they don't know the the nights that you cried. They don't know the prayers that you prayed. They don't know the sacrifices you've given up, the time you've given up, and the building that it took to get to that specific time and moment that they see that they are longing to have. So even with respect to success, uh, people see others maybe, you know, have a light on them right now. They may have a platform. If it's in the industry with music or someone else's spiritual walk, um, seeing someone being a little bit more advanced than they are and wanting to have those similar gifts and talents and platforms but not understanding that the the 
the process that it took for that person to get there wasn't an easy process. Most times when people have success or they have a great relationship, there was something that had to occur before that end result was what you perceive it to be. And in my opinion, I mean, my job is to make things look um, good on the outside to someone, especially someone who's watching me to take what I have. Um, I'm not supposed to share everything with somebody or or everybody um, because there's just some things that needs to be sacred and private and personal. But now I understand that it's okay to be a little transparent in things, but not just the good things, you know, being transparent of how, you know, those steps occur because everything in life is a process, everything. And so you don't just go from A to Z. Even in an alphabet, there's B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Y. So you never just go from A to Z or one to 10. There is a middle ground. And so to compare yourself, what you have to what someone else has, it's it's pointless, honestly. And it does speak volumes about the person who is comparing you might have a good heart, but you're not you're not operating in the manner that you should. If you really feel like you ought to have something that someone else has, one suggestion that I could have is to go and ask that person, you know, what did you do to get here? How did you how do you have a successful relationship? How did you get this job? How did you obtain that vehicle? You know, how did you raise your children and ask the questions and not just Don't let someone give you that, well, we met and we fell in love. We got married, the end. Ask about that process and not probing, but just, you know, what are some challenges that you face to get to this point that I see? And be honest about your perception of what you see, right? So you say, you know, it's, I'm on the outside looking in. It seems like you have the best relationship in the world. If you could name a few things that helped you along the way to get here, or if you can help me to understand if my perception is a little different from, you know, your real life and really how you lived this life and got to this point, would you mind sharing with me? I think the world will be a better place if we just stopped and asked questions and asked them in a respectful manner. But if you want to get somewhere, because really we're all created on this earth to edify one another, to help one another. And in order to do that, you have to have the information, but you have to be willing to go through the process that comes with it. Nothing in life is easy and nothing in life is handed to anyone. Not even people who receive inheritance um, from family members who may have been wealthy, right? There's a process in that. Someone lives, someone creates a legacy or a foundation they they have money they save it they put it into the trust fund and then they pass away and then you don't just get it you have to go through a process you have to read the will or you have to read the information that comes with it you probably have to sign some things you more than likely would uncle Sam I'm not getting the whole amount right then and there but there's a process before you actually receive those benefits so It's not really healthy to compare yourself to someone else because you just don't know the steps that they had to make to to get to that point that you're you're seeing and that you're wanting. Um, And could it be that you don't have the things that you see other people with because. You weren't thinking about it until you saw somebody with it. So like my mom used to always tell me when I was little, like if I, if she went fruit shopping and she was putting away things and then I would, I love fruit. So I would go, you know, can I have an apple and a plum and some grapes? And my mom would be like, you only want it because you see it. You weren't even thinking about it until you saw it. And it was true. Like I, I, I wasn't worrying about it, but when I seen it, I'm like, I think I'll have some grapes, a plum. An orange and an apple, you know, I just, I would ask for the things that I see. Um, and I don't think that that's always a bad thing. I just think if it wasn't something that you were mindful of in the first place, and then you just all of a sudden want it, then maybe you should take a step back and reevaluate why, why do you want this thing? Is it because you've seen it and it looks 
amazing from what you see and now you just want it. Or, I mean, take that time to sit and say, you know, or do I want this because this was something that might have been on the inside of me and I didn't know it until I seen it, but am I willing to do what it takes? And then start researching that thing. Am I go, Am I prepared to be a good wife? What does being a good wife mean? It doesn't mean getting dressed up in a pretty dress and having a big old party and everybody, you know, celebrating you. And it doesn't mean that you get to wear a fancy ring and run around and say that you're married or your missus, this and that. There's 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 levels to this. You, you to be a wife, like maybe you're not ready to be truly committed. Maybe you're not ready to share everything you had. Maybe you're not ready for the commitment that it really takes and the fight that it really takes to be a wife. Maybe the man that you're wanting to marry isn't ready. So, you know, just being mindful about why you want the things that you're comparing yourself with or to. Um, It's just not fair to that person that you're comparing your life to either because, you know, you might make that person incapable of being transparent about situations that they're going through. So if you're looking at someone's relationships or somebody's career um, and feeling like, you know, wow, I should have this because you have this. I don't have this, but you have this. That person may be going through things in that area and then feel uncomfortable with sharing that with anybody else because, you know, someone has put them on a pedestal that they didn't ask to be on. And so then they feel embarrassed to lack or be going through in that area because you're making it as if it's this grand old thing. And it's amazing to have and that they're lucky, quote unquote, to have that relationship or that job or that career or that business. And so now when something isn't okay for them, they don't feel like they can share that with you as the friend or the family because of the way that you look at them. And I just think that we should be careful with, you know, comparing ourselves, which could put others on a pedestal or above where they didn't ask to be. They just planned or things happen for them and they're maintaining because that's what God destined for them to have in this season. Comparisons are life sucking too. It's time wasted. Like you're so busy sitting around comparing what you don't have to what someone else has and you're wasting time because you can't control what another person has, only what you have. And right now in a moment of comparison, you have a lot of self-doubt. You have, you know, a lot of envy and we shouldn't be operating in those types of spirits. We need to be okay with where we're at and making plans and goals to get to where we want to be. You you have nothing to gain by comparing yourself to others because there will always be something else or someone else to compare yourself to. So if you're content with where you are and make plans to where you want to be, it takes away the comparing of other people and it allows you to have a foundation for yourself. And then you won't compare even with yourself. You'll be able to build on top of that thing that just for you and not worrying about other people and just sitting around pissed off, angry, bitter about the things that you don't have. You should focus on what you do have and be grateful for those things and then work toward receiving what you want. So just the very fact that you can get up in the morning to think about being comparison comparative to other people. I mean, the comparative part you can drop. You need to just let that be. But the the reality and the gift of life that you have your right mind to be able to be creative in what it is that you want for yourself, that's a blessing that you ought to be grateful for, that you have that, that God gave that to you. And take inventory of the things you have already. Even if you got to sit down and write it down, just write out everything I have. I have breath. I have use of my limbs, a roof over my head. I have um, a job or the ability to obtain a job. I have skill sets. You know, just take an inventory and be grateful of those things. Thank God for those things that you do have. And make sure that you understand that, that when you take inventory of the desires, that you have too, that's also a plus because 
You can write down the things that you aspire to have, not in comparison to someone else, but what is it that you want for you, for your life? Do you want the marriage? Do you want the business? You know, do you want the children? Write those things out and make sure that they are all good things and not bad things. We shouldn't, well, you know, one thing that really irks me about comparison, I think with TV, with respect to TV and radio is the reality shows and they, they kind of just. They irk my soul because people look at the women and they see the small waist and the hips and the big butts and the breasts and, you know, flawless makeup and the beautiful weaves they have in their hair. And and it makes people want to have that. So that's a comparison to me when you look at those chicks on those reality shows. And to me, I'm just looking at them like. I don't, I don't want to have a butt that big. Like, how do you go to the bathroom? Sit on, they don't make toilets that big for cheeks like that. I'm just saying. And then you lose yourself. Like, who, who are you when you get all these things done to your body because you're looking at someone else? Some people get things done to their bodies because they're just not happy inside and they don't realize that you have to transform your inside for your out for you to be okay with your outside appearance. At, and the reality shows are just it's a pet peeve of mine. The relationships that are on there, they some of them are beautiful. You know, marriages and then you open up the door and it allows other people who were comfortable with themselves to be uncomfortable with the company that they're around. That's why I'm a firm believer of being around like-minded people and people that, you know, are okay with who they are and confident about themselves because then there's no competition. You don't want to try to be like somebody else or you don't want what someone else has because you, you have that circle of people that you're around. And if they have something you don't, they will encourage you to get those things and show you how they were able to maneuver to get those things that can be personalized for yourself. But in a general sense, hey, you want to start the business? This is what I've done. I mean, even for me, for this podcast, I didn't have the slightest idea, but I have amazing people in my life who some one person is actually doing a podcast and and I started to listen to podcasts and it may open my eyes to Okay, maybe I can do that because I like to talk. So, and I'm not specifically talking to somebody, but I can do that. I feel like that that's what God was telling me to do, but I just never wanted to step out into it because the unknown used to frighten me. So, having that person in my circle, not that I was comparing, but I saw something and it sparked something inside of me. And it was like, okay, I can do this. I feel like. I can help people by just talking about things that they're embarrassed about or they shy away from or they just need a better understanding for some things that I may have been through and experienced in my life or some people around me. And I have other persons who who are spiritually like minded with me and they know God and they trust God and they believe in God, which helps me to be able to do it. So when I get in those moments where I feel like I am insignificant or not worthy or I can reach out to those people and they speak to me and they help me to understand, hey, this is what I do when I feel like I don't hear God or when I feel like he's not helping me or when he tells me no. They let me know that it's okay sometimes not to get the things that I want, but I will be okay in it no matter what. So being around other people who are like you, who can inspire you, encourage and uplift you is real key to helping you not compare yourself to other people because they will help you be the better you that you want to be. If you celebrate small victories in your own life, it could build up your self-esteem and encourage you to push continuously toward what you're comparing yourself to others about. So little things like, hey, today I got up. And it's now evening time and I haven't said one bad thing about somebody. That's a victory. Or I haven't gotten angry with somebody. That's a victory. Those little victories will build your self-esteem up and you'll know that those bigger things that you want to accomplish, you'll be able to do because you have you've shown yourself. You see that, okay, as long as I'm intentional and put my mind to something, I can get things done. And I'm grateful for the small things. And so when you're grateful in the small things, then you will be grateful and blessed with many more big things. 
you have to remember that God gave us everything. Like all of the things that we have, even want and compare ourselves to belongs to God. So if we understand that he, he runs everything in the world and we know that we can go to him and ask him for those things that we have desire of, but trusting in him and trusting in the process, because again, everything has a process, we're going to be okay and we'll receive those things that, you know, we want. Learn from other people. If there's something you admire about another person, humble yourself and ask for pointers and guidance, mentors, uh, suggestions, you know, it's, 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 it's easy to do. It really is. If you just be intentional about, don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about what somebody else got that you might want. Just be okay with where you at right now. And trust that is if you want it bad enough, you're going to be able to sit down and figure out the steps that you need to take to get those things. But don't want what other people have. It's not good for you to want what other people have, because if you, you can't get it and you don't get exactly what they have, then you're discouraged. Then you don't want to dream. Then you don't want to hope because you were focused on the wrong things. You were focused on someone else's blessings and not being okay with where you are and planning for your own. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Pretty Tough Room. And remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. Thank you.